Sashi. Hey, how are you? Hey, good. Good. How are you doing? Doing well. Thank you. Good. Thank you so much for making time to come and uh, be a part of the meeting this week. And, oh, uh, sure. I'm. Yeah. No, I'm excited to okay. to chat with you guys. Awesome. Awesome. Um, well, let me know if you um, want to do any screen sharing. I will make that possible for you. Okay. Um, and yeah, feel free to take the reins however you like. Ooh. Okay, good. Yeah, and that won't be till 1130, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, great. Hi, morning, Jennifer. Hi, Andrea. I mean, sorry, I, Adriana. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. How are you doing? Good. Um, I'm from Taking Action for Living Systems. Um, oh, great. Yeah, yeah. He's great. So. Fantastic. Glad you can make it. And I think, did you, did you go to the workshop over the weekend? Oh, cool. Awesome. Hey, Fred. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Jennifer. Nice to see you again. <laughs> Hi, Tosha. How many people do we have here? Uh, five of us right now. Okay. I'm giving a couple minutes for everyone to flow in. <laughs> Finish getting their coffee. Hey Fred, you know, actually I was looking for um, a facilitator for today. I don't know if you feel like doing that, but um, <clears throat> to put you completely- feel relatively facile. <laughs> 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 um, I'd be happy to do that. Great, and I can jump in at any point that you- I, I guess there's probably an agenda I should look at. Um, yeah, and actually I'll, I'll just share, I'll share it right now on the screen. Should be easy. <clears throat> and Fred, I'll just email it to you too so you have it. Good morning, good morning. All right, we'll give everyone a couple more minutes to come in before you get started. Okay, can you take the main, the agenda up page, please? I for all this blank space right there. Okay. And scaling up biochar. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, I put that on there because of your suggestion, Fred. Actually, we don't have any. Um, there is no like you know, Raymond didn't come to me and say he wanted to present. That was your idea. So thanks for getting it up there. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, as a side, uh, without this being an announcement, I'm working hard with uh, um, Sterling and his crew from the Casadero area to implement a biochar project on my land as a demonstration for equip for next year. So we're trying to scale up and we're looking at some, some approaches. Awesome. Very exciting. Okay. All right. Let's see. Field field trip April 23rd, May, April. Okay. So salt points the next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it's 
on my clock, it's five after. Yeah, I think we have enough folks we can get started. Okay. All right, and I'll just take, I'll take the agenda down so we can see each other. Hey. Um, I'm Fred Ufred, I'm your facilitator today. I'm a forester in Sonoma County and uh, manage land for a bunch of NGOs. I got the best job in the world. Okay. And um, what we normally do at this point is do a little round robin where everybody kind of fills in what they've been doing um, relative to the, the larger scale of forest activities in Sonoma or California. And um, Jennifer, why don't you tell us about yourself and, and what we're doing? Hi, I'm here um, um, from Taking Action from Living Systems. And I'm also a Climate Core Communications Fellow. So um, I'm here to learn about um, what's going on and then to communicate it. Um, and maybe Ana East um, would like to explain the mission of TALS. Okay. What is the mission of TALS? So Ana East, are you there? If not, I'll try. My, I'll do my best. <laughs> it's only been a few months. Um, but so it's the idea is to um, get landowners and to work with nonprofits in the government um, and to bring them all together to achieve landscape scale forest treatments um, for, you know, forest resilience and to decrease the risk of catastrophic wildfire. That's my best. <laughs> there you go. That's great. And you know that our goal is to manage landscapes over time and space. <laughs> Um, Jason Mills, you're next in my queue. And through hey, generations, Fred. Don't forget, and through generations. And <clears throat> thank you. Thank you for, I said across generations, across the, you're right. Okay. Now, let's go to Jason. <laughs> Forest generations or people generations? Let's just make it all generations. Um, happy <laughs> day, everybody. Um, I'm actually in the car, so I'm wondering if I can pass and you guys can come back to me. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll take a pass. Thank Kim, you, you have, have somehow gotten into my uh, queue. Talk. Oh, all right, it's good. Hi folks, Kim Batchelor with the Sonoma County Ag and Open Space. Uh, I am the Vegetation Management Coordinator for uh, the County and, uh, and Ag and Open Space. So uh, we are uh, wrapping up our final uh, recommendations for the 2022 uh, grant uh, cycle for the vegetation management grant program. And uh, we hope to notify all of our um, approved uh, and recommended projects as of uh, in about two weeks. So uh, keep an eye out for that. I know several of you have submitted applications. Um, it was a great field. We had uh, 40 different applications uh, running the gamut. We were really excited to see that most projects were environmentally compliant with CEQA, so that was not as much of a barrier as the uh, round one. Uh, also that we really encouraged people to look at multi-benefit um, projects so that they're looking at the types of treatments that are on a landscape scale. Those are types of things that we really wanted to encourage people to apply to. So a uh, lot, lot of uh, good action there. So um, I think we're looking forward to Presenting it to the board on April 19th is our official endorsement of the projects and see exactly uh, what the board feels there. So uh, that's all I have to share with you right now. How much money are you giving away? About $2.7 million. Excellent. Glad, mm -hmm. really glad that you've been able to do that. Yeah. BC Caps. Hello. Hi there. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me. Uh, uh, my name is BC Caps. I'm with the Regional Climate Protection Authority. I uh, only occasionally get to attend these meetings uh, because of a meeting conflict, but uh, very glad to be able to participate uh, this morning. So uh, just a couple of quick updates from our end of projects that we're working on here. Uh, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, RCPA, we're, we are a countywide collaborative body, uh, which is a special district made up of the County of Sonoma and a number and all the cities and towns uh, local jurisdictions, and so we are, um, are participating as part of the Ag and Open Space District's uh, Natural and Working Lands um, Climate Adaptation Strategy that is currently being conducted uh, with the use of an outside consultant, and we're sitting as one of the members on the Implementation Action Group. Uh, there are uh, D. Swanheiser is also a, uh, participating in that group. 
Um, and I can imagine there are several others on this call that are part of the tech, technical advisory committee to that effort. Uh, so um, uh, we are meeting uh, this afternoon, a joint meeting of the two kind of uh, advisory groups uh, to go over the latest research, uh, the greatest latest work from the consultants that are working uh, with the Ag and Open Space District on this climate adaptation strategy. Uh, the second thing I wanted to mention really quick is some work that we're gearing up for, which I think is tangential to what you all are doing here, but I wanted to mention it. Uh, we're looking at, um, uh, we participate with a nationwide organization called the Urban Sustainability Directors Network, and we have an opportunity through that group, through USDN, to get some graduate student researcher assistance for throughout the summer. And so we're gonna be working with a grad student. Uh, I believe they're actually based out of Colorado, uh, but we're gonna be working with them to try to accomplish a survey of all the local jurisdictions and their current tree protection ordinances, uh, what's included in those ordinances, what's not included, um, and how those compare with um, say, uh, uh, kind of a climate forward looking tree protection ordinance or model ordinances. Um, so this work is really built on top of um, a foundation of some work that's been done by Relief Petaluma um, and looking at adopting, they're working, they are advocating to the city of Petaluma to update their, the local tree protection ordinance there in the city. And we are hoping to step in to perf um, provide some additional analysis to see if we can uh, spread that work uh, to do kind of analyze uh, the, the ordinances across all the cities. Um, and the county of Sonoma. So those are a couple of projects we've got going on right now. And again, you know, just uh, glad to be here. So thanks. That's very exciting. Did you see the New York Times article on reforestation over the last few days? No, I'm not sure if I saw that. I can track that down right now. It was, track it down. It says, too many trees, threat or menace. Ah, okay. <laughs> Quite a headline. <laughs> or something like that. Hey, Ron Rolleri, how's it going? Pretty good. Uh, so I'm a director with uh, Sonoma RCD. And uh, yesterday we had a meeting with uh, Jill was there. She, she's our secretary. She could probably tell you a little more about what we're doing in the Gualala River collaborative effort. And uh, we're waiting for money from the uh, uh, Department of Reclamation. And uh, we've got several partners sort of lined up ready to do a survey, well, several projects. And uh, so uh, anyway, I'm here to find out what's happening. <laughs> and, and be part of what's happening. What exactly are those projects? Well, uh, well, like Jill could probably explain it better than me. But, okay. Uh, yeah. With Gualala River Enhancement and Gualala Watershed Enhancement? Right. It kind of goes back to when we started a survey about 30 years ago, 25 years ago, and I started the Gualala River Watershed Council, which was really yeah. pretty successful getting hobo temps and everything in the water. And yeah. so we're kind of reviving everything, buying a new computer and all that sort of stuff. Seems like only yesterday to some of us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks, Ron. Hey, Jennifer Wolf. Jennifer Wolf. Uh, yeah, I've already, already went. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. No worries. <laughs> it keeps queuing everybody up back at me. So I'm trying to figure this out. Um, um, gallery. Uh, <clears throat> Adriana, do you have some, some news for us today? Fred? Um, no, not really. Not on my end. Um, okay. I'm excited to hear more about the tour that happened over the weekend. That's that's all I was thinking about. <laughs> okay. Jason, have you stopped driving? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, thanks, Fred. Um, yeah, Jason Mills, senior restoration contractor with WRA. We're a permitting and implementation and planning outfit. And uh, we're busy as ever. Um, my team is out there doing invasive plant control and habitat restoration and post fire sites. We did a couple hundred plants on uh, post-fire sites along the, out, in, out in Napa Tribs. 
So that was satisfying. And now we're controlling invasives on TAM. But my particular passion is to link fuel reduction with invasive plant control and just be a resource out there for communities and public lands trying to make sense of all that vegetation out there. So keep up all the good work, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Sashi, oh, excuse me, Caitlin, let's, let's take you next. Thank you. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I'm in such a glare. Um, I'm going to pass to my colleague, Barry Hill. And um, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Barry Hill. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Hi, so yeah, I, uh, both Caitlin and Ellie and I were on the field tour on Sunday. I thought it was was pretty interesting. Uh, hopefully we can talk about it some more uh, later on. But uh, as far as what we're doing, and I, yeah, so I'm the restoration program manager for Sonoma Ecology Center. We have a small crew that's out working on a variety of projects, uh, kind of moving around Sonoma County. We've been doing some work out at the Van Hoosier Wildflower uh, Preserve along with PCI, and that went uh, pretty well. That was about uh, a three week project of doing some planting out there. We're also planning to do a prescribed burn out there in late May. Uh, one of the things that's been pretty interesting uh, for our crew has been to be involved with the biochar program. So we've done that on a number of days over the last couple of months, um, but that will come to an end at the end of April or, or maybe sooner, depending on the burn season. Um, but that's uh, just a, a, a pretty good way if you can set it up to get rid of some of that woody debris, which, you know, it's a major challenge in a lot of places. And uh, yeah, other than that, we're looking at doing a lot of uh, post-fire restoration, invasive plants and replanting. That is great. Uh, to finish up SEC, hey, Ellie. Uh -huh. hey, hey, Fred. It's always entertaining to have you in charge. <laughs> that was a great, that was a great tour on Sunday. Um, yeah, I'm reading that uh, the, the New York Times article about putting the wrong trees in the wrong place, which is uh, anyway, something that I've been working on with the Resilient Landscapes Coalition, along with Master Gardeners and uh, UC Cooperative Extension and Habitat Corridor Project. But recently, um, Ecology Center has been working again with UC Cooperative Extension and Occidental Arts and Ecology Center and Santa Rosa JC, and we have... Um, just confirmed funding from um, uh, uh, Fire Safe Sonoma to do a pilot project. We, you know, we did the Beyond the 100 Feet. We did that presentation in West County uh, for ecological approaches to vegetation management beyond the defensible space zone. And now we have funding to actually take that a few steps farther and start a literature review and do more workshops um, at Occidental Arts Ecology Center and the JC Schoen Farm. And uh, so that's, we're gonna get started on that ASAP. And then we applied for funding from the county to, to expand that even further. And Sashi's gonna talk about that later today to actually create the much desired handbook of best management principles and practices for vegetation management. So. That's exciting. We're getting started on that. And we're going to be calling on all of you guys for experience and expertise to help us put that together. That's it. Um, be good to know more about that handbook uh, so that we're all on the same page. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Sashi's going to talk a little bit about it because she it's UC Cooperative Extension actually filed for the grant. And uh, but we're okay. so she'll tell you later. Well, Sashi will tell us now. Hi, Sashi. Hi. Oh, you're on mute. Sorry. I, 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 um, hey there. I, I think I'm going to be doing that later on, but I'll just um, you know, uh, briefly say uh, hi. I'm uh, Sashi Separatnam, um, UC Cooperative Exten Extensions Wildfire uh, Vegetation Mitigation Program Manager. Um, and uh, I will be talking to you a little bit later about what we're working on. OK, well, it's great to have you with us today. Tosha. Hello. Hi, everyone. Good to see you all. Um, I'm Tasha Commandant. I'm the Conservation Science Manager at Pepperwood. And right now we are um, actively trying to get some fire on the ground after we've thinned a kind of a big 100 acre chunk. We've been um, a little delayed in 
the prescribed fire with a lot of uh, Cal Fire logistics and <laughs> bureaucracy, um, but we were actually able to do kind of a little jackpot burn with the rain this last week. Um, but we have quite a few monitoring projects going on to measure the impacts of these um, treatments on the ground. Um, and then I'm just very excited. We're a partner on the Wildfire Fuel Mapper, so I'm happy to um, hear Sashi's presentation and to see you all. Thanks for having cool. me. Cool, and you're referring to the 100 acres or so that you um, turn, put into piles, dead wood, chopping after the fire, put it into piles, and now you're going to burn 100 acres or something. Well, yes, and there was a there was a uh, one of the polygons we uh, opted to do pile burning there, and so we ended up with around 2,000 piles. So yes. we made it through about I don't know 1,500 or so of those at this point. Um, <sighs> So for this other chunk on the east side of the preserve, um, we were definitely hoping to do more of a broadcast burn, um, but after actually getting uh, Sasha out there um, a couple weeks back, you know, some of the areas are just too high fuel density for that to be really a good strategy. So we're kind of going back through there, um, doing some fuel reduction with the piles just to kind of even bring that fuel load down to like where we could get sort of an ecologically beneficial burn. Um, so yeah, really a mix of pile burning and broadcast. And, and we'll be talking water. about the field trip later. Sounds like a dog. Hello, thank you very much, Tasha. Hello, Sophia. Hi there, Fred, how are you doing? Good I'm to see good. you. I'm good, I'm good. It's great while. to see you on this call. Sophia was <laughs> one of my students uh, and I think I learned a lot from her. Huh. I learned a lot from you, Fred. Um, with that being said, I'm actually with UC Cooperative Extension in Marin, um, and I am brand new, well, a couple months and in a brand new position, and the title is Fire Smart Landscaping and Science Coordinator. So I basically am, a lot of what I'm doing right now is working with the UC Master Gardeners and the Fire Smart Landscaping team, focusing on education and outreach and research and messaging. So I work closely also with our partners, Fire Safe Marin and Marin Wildlife Fire Prevention Authority, and also a group called Ecological Sound Practices. Um, and a lot of it, like I said, is really focusing on education and outreach, um, especially that nexus between vegetation management specialists, landscapers, and homeowners, and home hardening. Um, and currently, my, currently, I am working with Fire Safe Marin on there, I don't know if you've heard of the event Ember Stomp that's happening at the end of May and Labor Day, May 28th. And I'm working with the Master Gardeners to create a demonstration garden for that. But I'm here in this group because really, I'm, I'm also interested beyond just the home. And honestly, the wildlands is really where my heart is. I mean, like you said, Fred was my teacher. <laughs> and I'm interested in kind of research in this area as well and kind of expanding beyond just the home in this position when that eventually comes up. So. So thrilled to see you here, Sophia. I know you'll you'll add a lot. And Jill Butler is the last person I got. Hi, Jill. Jill. Jill Butter. Okay. Good morning. No, I mean I'm here just. Uh, took me a minute to get unmuted. Um, <laughs> so Jill Butler representing Hualala River Watershed Council, and uh, not. Not a lot of news um, uh, to report from the council. We're, um, we've wrap, wrapped up the uh, monitoring work for the fall and haven't started the monitoring work for the spring. And as um, Ron mentioned, we're uh, still on hold with starting this Wallala uh, River Watershed Collaborative. Uh, project, which is Sonoma RCD's project, um, but we are, are uh, one of their contractors for, for implementing work. Um, Jason Wells, I, I think, is going to be our main uh, uh, contact person, although I don't know if he's technically the RCD lead. And of course, um, that Jason 
uh, well, both Jasons are, are very busy people. Although I did um, happen to see on Goldridge's newsletter that Jason Wells is advertising for, for a tech. So um, that should make his life a lot easier. Yes, and I believe they already have one tech, Will, working with them. Oh, excellent. So they're, they're expanding. And uh, Jill, do you um, recall if your projects are, are creek type project in, in stream or up uh, into the watershed? Um, so are, are you, would, do you wanna hear a little bit more about um, the collaborative project? I can, can give people sort of an overview if, if you would like. Maybe what we wanna do is push that to the next agenda um and make a note of it now and have you guys debrief us then um yeah i i could give you like a two minute version or we can wait and i can give like a five or ten minute i want the 10 minute version with pictures okay and, <laughs> and maybe we can get uh jason uh yeah uh, to give that since he's uh, right. technically the right person to do it rather than me um but maybe i'll just say really briefly that um, I think there's um, three basic uh, uh, goals of that collaborative. Uh, one is, is uh, forming a coalition of um, agency and uh, NGOs that work in the watershed to, to start um, meeting and um, collaborating. Um, updating uh, existing management plans. Uh, so that will we'll work off the previous work done for the total maximum daily load and the North Coast Watershed Assessment Program plans. Uh, and then developing um, uh, and prioritizing a list of projects for the watershed. Okay. And I think, um, that is definitely going to look at um, uh, fisheries and listed species and habitat, uh, forest health, and um, fuels reduction, probably amongst other things. <laughs> <laughs> Great. OK, thank you. That was really, really good. And maybe we should do that in the future. Adriana, if you could put the um, agenda back up on the screen. Um, how are we doing on time? We are good. Um, checking on funding opportunities applicable to all members. Uh, Adriana, what was your idea on that? Um, that's kind of just a standing item on the agenda for us to talk more, you know, with greater focus on the, the funding part of what we do since we're always talking about grant opportunities and um i um it was great that kim already mentioned the status of the vegetation management program because that was kind of like the main one that i had in mind for this month but if there are other um grants that people know of want to talk about or just give status updates on if you've something you've already applied to um that's all great um Okay, I can kick off with um, Roger Sternberg is um, laundering money for one tree planted. And um, uh, this year, I again hope to get 75 cents per tree that I bought on spec and uh, have put in the ground and sold to neighbors. And uh, it's been a real boon uh, because it fills in some gaps that equip and um, Cal Fire can't do. For one, it doesn't take much paperwork. So that's my my one. Uh, anybody else have some good funding opportunities that we're not aware of? Don't speak all at once. But everybody probably knows about the um, the the. I think it's a. Uh, <clears throat> Is it the Fire Safe Council, California Fire Safe Council just put out a, a thing about, you know, a chipper. I didn't read it that thoroughly and somebody else might, 
might want to speak up on it, but um, I know the communities are looking for chippers and there was a, a flyer that went around about from the uh, Fire Safe Council about funding for that, not for buying chippers, but for organizing chipper programs. Great. Thanks. If I could just comment on that. Um, it's something that uh, it's been interesting working with the groups that were approved in 2021 for the vegetation management grant program is that um, the, pro the projects that included acquisition of equipment um, have been the slowest to get ramped up um, versus contracting those services or taking advantage of the county's um, chipper program. Um, the Sonoma Valley uh, Fire Department, they have a chipper now and they're getting ramped up. Um, Coast Ridge uh, Forest Council has also acquired a, a chipper uh, through the grant program. And uh, I was able to visit that property or that project uh, last weekend and was really pleased with the type of work that they're doing. It just, uh, there's a lot to managing and maintaining a chipper. So um, be realistic about your expectations when you acquire these type of uh, equipment uh, and that they uh, end up um, making sure that you get the, the work done on, on time. So that's just comments on what we've seen in the field. I've, I've heard uh, a number of agencies say, why do we have to buy our own damn excavator or whatever when there should, because then it just sits eight months a year. Uh, masticator was what they were talking about. And I'm wondering if there's any, uh, like we have a lending library, if there was any interest in the county uh, creating a chipper pool or some other kind of pool like Marin does. Um, That's a great suggestion. In fact, the, the Sonoma RCD came to us with a proposal that includes uh, doing something like that along Calistoga Road where they have like a tool equipment um, rental program where they can work with landowners to be able to acquire uh, equipment to do vegetation treatments. Um, we're encouraging uh, the Coast Ridge uh, Forest Council to develop a program uh, in the Sonoma Coast Collaborative where they're starting to share those types of resources. Those are things that I think would be really valuable to uh, try to uh, leverage and, and uh, replicate those projects uh, elsewhere. That's great. Yeah, if you ever drive through Point Reyes Station and take the back road, you'll see 25 chippers sitting next to each other. Uh, it's part of the fire department program. Other funding opportunities people would like to share? Okay, <laughs> with that, let's go into a debrief of the tour we did. Uh, okay. just other, yeah. I just wanna say too that it seems like that was a really um, important thing for people to have time to talk about the, you know, what's better purchasing equipment or or renting it or, you know, some other in-between kind of option. I don't know if people want to sort of table that conversation and come back to it again. Um, if anyone has any ideas about, you know, like people they'd like to hear from or anything, I can schedule someone to come and talk to us and help us with that conversation around that topic. That would be really good. At this time, uh, my operation, we only rent equipment or people with equipment because we don't want to own anything. Um, this, uh, there's a lot of forestry companies around that do that. Um, as we are maturing into this uh, fire safe stuff, clearly that's something that has to happen. So I would love to hear from the COPE organizations and from those, those people using this. If you could put that together, that would be great. Okay, great. Okay. Are you writing down the next agenda as we do this? Um, yeah, I always take. Of course, you are. <laughs> Adriana, if you want me to um, connect you to what we're doing in Marin, I'm happy to do that. I yes. put some information in the chat. That would be great. Thank you, Sashi. Great. Um, demystifying forest management. Can we move on? Should we move on? Hearing. Yeah hearing nothing um well i did the the tour so i was there but i was talking who would like to talk about it <laughs> ellie hello okay oh my my goodness i um 
I am not prepared to talk about it. I took a lot of notes on my phone and I was about to, you know, sit down and, and organize my notes. Um, but one of the main things that I found fascinating, I mean, I think is a super important subject is, well, and, and also from comments that you made, Fred, out of the, after the Wallbridge fire is just how much, how much, how much wood do you leave on the ground and where do you leave it when you do <coughs> Um, you know, when you, when you do forest management and, and post fire, when there's a lot of dead stuff sitting around and, and also the, the question about, um, who the funders are and what kind of, what kind of, um, environmental requirements, because this was supposed to be about de demystifying the riparian, how to, how to do the work in the riparian zone, but basically none of the work that we saw was in the riparian zone because of all the, um, all the regulatory requirements and, and just so, so how, what, what do we do about that? And how do we go about actually removing some of the truly hazardous fuels in the riparian zone when there's so many barriers to doing that? And I think that um, that's something that we need to talk about. I, I know that at Sonoma Ecology Center, we are doing some of that work, but we're getting stream, lake and stream bed alteration agreements before, and that's very expensive. Um, but anyway, it was a beautiful walk, lots of great wildflowers and, um, and, and some, and some really encouraging, um, in, encouraging views of what the forest looked like. I think that, um, the ag and open space folks on Nuns Canyon had just done a tremendous job. We also talked about the, um, the, the labor force and, uh, the, the groups that are doing the work and how wonderful it is to be helping young people. And, and also the fact that you don't always get the, you know, hundred percent active work all the time. And st still, how do you, how do you manage that? Because it's a, it's to a good purpose. Um, those are all the things that float to the top for me, but um, I'm sure there's a million more that I'm missing. Well, um, just a little spackle in there. We went to um, three projects uh, we, two of them were um, uh, public agencies, one, or essentially we did uh, Sonoma, uh, sorry, Sonoma Land Trust at Glen Oaks, and we walked and looked at uh, both archaeological stuff that interfered with the process and slowed it down, um, meaning the old rock walls in Sonoma. And we looked at um, a thinning project that extended about 150 feet. And we looked, turned around and looked at the um, riparian zone, which was still completely cluttered with material. And asked the question, can this, can this work? Uh, will this effectively stop a fire? Or will we have the hardest burning within that riparian zone? And uh, then we went over, that was, Stewart Creek Canyon, and then we went over to Calabasas Creek Canyon and looked at a project that Open Space did. And um, both of these projects featured, um, I were in areas that had burned and featured trees that had been cut down to one or two stems, like bay, uh, particularly bay, and uh, were now growing. And I was particularly excited to see that the deer were doing their part in keeping the, the bay sprouts down and the bays were growing up above the deer line already. So we were getting good revegetation and good fuel breaks in that area. Um, and then we went, and then we looked at the stuff which was impossible to take around the riparian zone, discussed maybe it's worth making some breaks in the riparian zone. And then uh, we also went to Valerie's, which is adjacent to Calabasas Creek. And Valerie, ha as a private landowner, and she has worked very hard to get all of the vegetation away from the creek. And we're like, whoa, <laughs> this is grass all the way down to the creek for uh, 50 feet. Is this what we want to see? And um, we were very lucky and had folks from Water Quality and CDFW participating with us and uh, asking some good questions. And I think everybody, everybody learned a lot. Um, I certainly did. The tour was full and uh, everybody was a professional. It was such great peer-to-peer -peer communication, just like we're doing right now. So that's my take on, essentially. 
We still don't have an answer for riparian zones. Okay. Other comments or questions? Yeah, uh, Fred, this is very, uh, I was on a tour. Uh, yeah, I, I was a little surprised as Ellie mentioned that really of the, the projects that we looked at, uh, the first two that there really wasn't any work in the riparian zone. So, um, and I understand, okay, it was funded by CAL FIRE. Uh, I think if we do this again, we need to get some people from CAL FIRE out there. Um, but uh, as you mentioned, you know, it's pretty clear that in some situations, those riparian zones are gonna be conduits for fire. And, and that's certainly been observed in some other places. And I think, you know, the most uh, well-known example that I can offer right now would be the Angora fire at Lake Tahoe in 2007 which went right up a riparian zone and burned over 200 houses. And as a result of that, the uh, Forest Service at Lake Tahoe went through a very extensive uh, environmental process, primarily with the <sighs> Water Quality Control Board and came up with a uh, fuels treatment plan that ended up being very effective in stopping the cowboy <sighs> fire. Hello? Um, <laughs> yeah, this last summer. So, um, mm -hmm. You know, up on the national forest, there has been a lot of work done. Uh, you know, that including with the right regulatory agencies, and including working in riparian zones. You know, obviously, they do a lot of commercial logging on national forests, and we're not looking at doing that here. But they also do a lot of fuels work. So, I think that's worth looking at in a lot more detail than we have so far. We did have an opportunity to talk with the regulatory staff that was on the field tour. And at least, you know, for fish and wildlife, they're okay with us working in the riparian zone. I didn't get a chance to really explore that too much with the water board staff, David, who was there, uh, but they do have a permit system that would allow that. So I, I would just advocate that we're gonna have to be looking at that a lot more in the future. Barry, that's super interesting. Would it be possible to get some of the forest service uh, folk or um, Cal Fire folk who worked on the Tahoe region to, to participate with us? Yeah, I could try to do that. That would be great. And uh, thank you very much. And Adriana just took that down. <laughs> and uh, I also wanted to add some things um, from, from my work in Cal Poly. Um, the project that I'm working on is super related to this and it's really too bad I couldn't, I couldn't either be there with you guys on Sunday and you can't come down here to San Luis Obispo because it's just a little too far away. But um, uh, the project I'm looking at is like this exact thing. So the Salinas River in Paso Robles um, is experiencing a lot of fire because of homeless encampments. Um, and so the city of Paso Robles, um, which I, 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 I don't totally understand all the regulations around this, but I think that because they're in the local responsibility area outside of the SRA, they have decision-making power about how they want to manage fuels in their city. So they actually um, kind of took emergency action in 2020 to go in and start doing some really heavy fuels reduction along the riparian corridor and the riparian to lower the flammability of the fuels and um, and really to make it less hospitable for the homeless who were the primary ignition source um, from their like warming fires and cook fires and um, other activities they were doing. And um, they kind of just started doing this based on an emergency, like they sort of just declared a state of emergency to let them do what they needed to do. But they followed up with um, a, kind of like a long-term management plan, which is what they're doing now a couple of years later and which is what I'm studying. And um, they gotten permitting for that long-term management plan from the water board. And um, they're also working with Fish and Wildlife on a permit. And the water board permit is basically like a um, discharge. Um, I think it's related to the discharge, like making sure that there's no like sediment that's gonna be, or like other impacts to the water quality from the project. Um, and they've done do mitigation anywhere that there is impacts. And then for Fish and Wildlife, um, it's a lake and stream bed alteration 1600 permit, um, which kind of similarly just makes sure there no, there's no, I think really the biggest thing is impacts to the canopy, um, cause canopy has so much to do with wildlife habitat and water quality. Um, and so, so far they've been able to do this and they're going to keep doing it. Um, and yeah, basically my study is looking at how, um, effective the project is at reducing fire risk 
we, we know intuitively that it's going to be very effective, but we want to kind of show in numbers. I'm going to be doing some fuels assessment and also running some fuel models um, to kind of talk about that. And then the next phase of the project, which I may or may not be a part of, it's kind of beyond my years at Cal Poly, but we want to look at impacts to riparian habitat in terms of uh, wildlife habitat. And, um, and then the kind of the final culmination of the whole thing will be providing some like, you know, case studies, some report to regulating agencies to let them know, hey, this is our experience here in Paso, maybe we should be looking at this in other places and making this more doable. Because really the regulators at the outset of the whole thing were like, uh, we don't really know how to permit work in the right period. We don't really do that. So they had to sort of like think differently about the whole thing. And um, uh, I think actually when they were going to re- when they were going to permit it, they, they used like a construction permit. Like it was something like they only do for construction in the riparian. They're like, clearly this isn't construction, but we don't have anything that really is about fuels control. So um, they need, our, our goal is to help them think about how to start permitting fuels activity safely and smartly in the riparian. So. Awesome. That is just amazing, Adriana. And <laughs> thank you. And uh and let's continue to think about anadromous fish as we're doing this. The ESU goes all the way down to Malibu Creek, I believe. Uh, so, so steelhead and, and salmon are an issue, but uh, sounds like great work. Really excited to hear that. Look forward to reading. And yeah. I just, I mean, I guess I do want to say if you guys want to take a field trip down to Paso, I would be so happy to host you. So if you ever want to come and see it, let me know. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like a really informative and necessary area of research, Adriana. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. I just, I just wanted to throw a couple more things into the mix while we're on this really important subject that has come up in some other circles, a conversation that I think relates to it. And I, I, I'm just eager to get feedback from the working group and maybe we table this to a, a later meeting, but we got into looking at, you know, who's actually doing this work, right? Who's being paid to do the fuel work? Who's willing and able to do this work? And what are they being paid to do the work? As we allocate millions of dollars to vegetation management, that money is essentially enough money to support young people and to develop a working class. And should those should those funds be then doled out in, in enough to support people to live within this county, right? So livable wages. And then there's so much work out there for everybody. <laughs> Would it make sense to maybe have like different tiers of skilled labor to work in different environments, right? If you're doing fuel reduction in a riparian system, that might be just cause to bring in laborers at a higher rate who might be able to do plant ID. Because sadly, what I see happening out there is par for the course, just biomass getting stripped out of the system. And in the wake of this disturbance, I'm just, I'm going to see it. I'm expecting, sadly, to see a, a huge surge in ladder fuels after the work. And it just, it concerns me as an ecologist because, you know, at that point, we're doing a disjustice to the environment and the community. And I don't see the fix yet. So not an easy fix, but I'm hoping this group has some advice on how to get there. That's a really good call that this is a social program as well as a, uh, both through the, the homeless population and also through the young worker population and through the skill set population and the insurance population. I mean, uh, I always save the big trees for my LTOs so no one gets killed. Uh, I, you, uh, oh, sorry, Fred. Go ahead. Oh, I, I, I want to mention that that topic came up while we were on the tour that um, um, the Hanford ARC has been working on a program. I have spoke to them a year and a half ago about this, and I, I don't know where it is right now. Somebody else might, but to, to develop a, a, you know, a, a high, highly skilled training program for crews to do you know, what, what Jason's talking about, not just know how to use chainsaws, but identify plants and do the work in a way that's not going to harm the habitat. And then I know that Santa Rosa JC is also developing a program to, to train crews. And 
you know, at the Sonoma Ecology Center, we're trying really hard. That's why we've been pushing this idea of a, uh, ecological best management principles and practices so that we can help in the process of training crews. And, and I know that the, the JC is on board with that. Apparently, UC um, San, uh, Sonoma, sorry, uh, what's the name of the, the one in uh, Rohnert Park? Um, University Sonoma of State. California. Hmm? Sonoma State. <laughs> So state, oh yeah, that's right. It's not UC. Is uh, has a program that they're developing. Um, not quite, not a, not necessarily crew training, but um, so there's a lot going on here, and I think that you know maybe Sachi will talk about it. But but we want to kind of be in the middle of it to make sure that they're ecological and and social um, thoughts and and practices put in place. So maybe we need to, uh, this is like where I was getting to is this could be another topic that, that we, the cr crew development and, and um, you know, whatever else we wanna involve with that. I think that's really interesting. Looking at our um, agenda, I say, yeah, I see, should we repeat the event in a new location? We've already been invited to Paso. <laughs> uh, Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> Do, do we want to see that as, as a possibility or would we uh, want to do something in Marin? Is there a, a, a Marin uh, demo? A demo of what? Of riparian forest management um, reduced for fire danger. Um, let me reach out to Danny Franco at the Golden Gate Parks Conservancy and ask him what he's got. Thank you very much. It's closer than Paso Robles. Yeah, Marin came up for me too because I was um, I got an email from Sarah Phillips who works for the Marin RCD and she was like, oh, I'm really bummed I can't come. We are talking so much about this in Marin, especially in, in terms of PG&E. And, &E. and um, actually Sarah also mentioned um, the, well, of course the wildfire prevention authority that's down there and also their, their own ecological fuels, man, I forget. Um, Sophia mentioned the name of it, I can't remember, but it sounds a lot like Eolo that. Ecologically Sound Practices Partnership. Yes. And she said that would be great to, you know, get all those people in Marin to talk about the same topic. And um, and I was I was like, I'm sure Ellie knows about this group and our, our eco practices group knows about them, but I just want to make sure that you guys do know about each other because if you don't, we should all get together. <laughs> well, I think going to San Rafael before San Luis makes sense. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's let's um, if you could follow up on that, Marin folk, that would be really great. Um, and we also see ex opportunities to expand the conversation. Cal Fire, PG&E, County, TPW, uh, Public Works. Is that right? Uh huh. Um, yeah. It, uh, it was a shame that those three. Um, organizations couldn't have been represented on our tour because I think they're a really big part of the conversation too. So I just thought, you know, maybe next time we do it, we should fold them in. I would love a conversation with pg e in one of the fire zones, uh, how we're having to do clear cuts adjacent to areas that burn uh, their power lines. Um, I can talk about that when I talk a little later because I just came back from their um, San Ramon wildfire um, <laughs> Uh, center and just toured, just did that yesterday, actually. Okay, great. Or Tuesday, yeah. Um, so we'll talk about expanding the conversation if we get to Marin. Brief written summary report of the uh, tour. Is that what you're looking for, Adriana? Yeah, you know, I was thinking um, for everyone who couldn't make it and um, just for just to have it kind of recorded because I think it's a big topic for us. I wanted to put together a kind of a brief written summary about what we learned on that trip and we can add to it with the next one. And I don't know if it's gonna be like a guidance document or more of just kind of like a reference for people who wanna hear what's been, you know, so a couple of case studies to learn from. We can look at the tape of this and uh, summarize that and, um, and go through the expansion, say where we're going next. Thank nice. you. Okay. Yay, outreach activities. Um, da, 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 fire management decision support framework. Susan Hayden, is she scheduled? Not yet. It is, um, yeah, not yet, but she, I can ask her if she wants to look out the next you know, couple months. 
I think there's maybe, I think she was kind of waiting for something to be finished on. Kim's nodding. Yeah, there's, <laughs> okay. I think the, the, the tool may be not quite at the point or they're not at the stage yet where they're, they're doing outreach. I, I think June, yeah, Mayor June is probably, or June is probably better, but I don't want to speak for her, but I, I'm pretty sure that that's uh, based on the schedule I, I know, but we'll, I'll talk about some of that later. Sashi knows everything. Um, <laughs> Good Fire Alliance update. Do we have a date for, for um, Gar Garrett or uh, Sasha? Um, no, so actually none of these are planned yet. They're just, no, um, I've, I reached out to Garrett and um, waiting to hear back. And I haven't reached out to, I was thinking of reaching out to, um, oh, um, I'm sorry, it's not Karen, um, Kathleen, Kathleen, Catherine, sorry, maybe. Sorry, Catherine Gledhill. Catherine Gladhill, thank you. I was going to reach out to Catherine Gladhill or Karen and see if um, either of them would like to talk about the um, technical assistance program at NTRP. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'll just, we, just keep doing that. Until and we we've already, uh, we've got Pepperwood uh, in the room or close to it. Um, and the scientific research on forest conservation, you know, they've been doing a series of burn uh, guide walkthroughs. It would be great to see what those look like. And I think we can put that together pretty quickly. So, yeah, that was something that Dee suggested that we have Lisa or someone talk about all the kind of work that Pepperwood is, is doing. So and maybe even Tasha would be, could be a possible presenter on, on some of that. Yes, absolutely. And I see that we have it further down in the agenda B. Um, da, 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 da. Two, I, I, <laughs> Roman numeral small two, June 22nd, Michael Gologli, um, looking at that. And maybe that is, uh, that's, that's similar, but not the same. This uh, forest conservation is a, is, a tosh, is a Tasha, I would think. Tasha, are you still here? She may have yes. stepped away, but I She's will. Quiet. <laughs> okay. Um, and living with fire. So, what if we, uh, Peter Lacorte is ready to do that anytime, right? Um, yes, I think we actually have a date for that. That'll be, I think, it's the last Saturday in April, the 23rd. 23rd. So, not the last one, but yeah. Okay. So, that's not on this. Wait, maybe it is on this. It's it. Um, oh, I think it is at the very bottom. And I'm going to start advertising as soon as I get a little more information from from Peter. Okay, great. That should be great. He's been he presented, um, you know, just over Zoom to us about the kind of work that that he's doing in Napa at the, the at the Pacific Union College Forest, and um, and it's just it's great. He like they they are located kind of on that like a watershed ridge. And he's doing a lot to try and um, keep fire from the east in Calistoga coming into England um, and further west into our county. And he's he's very passionate about it and has been just putting a ton of time and effort into that. So I, I think it would be great to go out and see that. And Jason, were you guys contracted for some of that work too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's an amazing site. Peter's been doing so much work. He has a really sound game plan there. So it'd be a really useful field trip for the group. And he's doing things on different scales. So it's it's a good exposure to fuel reduction techniques. And we should hold hands with uh, Cal Fire on that because Las Posadas State Forest is right next door. And literally thousands of miles, of, uh, thousands of feet of boundary. And uh, so that's a different management plan and a different headspace. So I'll point, working on that. Um, I'm now on page two, Adriana. Oh, yes, sorry about that. I'm looking at my other version. <laughs> I'm looking at your other version too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, everyone. <laughs> uh salt point i'm working on it forest for wildlife at pepperwood michael gologli is is a star matt green have we heard anything about kashaya no you know that one's been kind of just held out there i haven't even contacted matt green yet since we had all these other kind of tours happening ahead of it but um if people still would like to go out to kashaya i think it would be amazing um yeah 
Yeah, and maybe not super busy. Maybe we want to reach out to the tribe. Um, Ellie Insley will be doing ecological ecological fuels management. Is that correct? Again, that's just kind of always been hanging out there as like a let's keep it on the list to do someday. <clears throat> yeah, that is a. I mean, that's what we're we're working on. You know pretty much constantly, but it's a very complex subject. So you can leave it there and they'll leave, we'll leave it there. <laughs> and uh, Ray Baltar works, worked with you so we can swap them around uh, and see that's if we can. Really, that's also just kind of the nature of the handbook that um, is going to be developed by the UC Extension and trying to understand exactly how to roll in those types of management practices along with fire mitigation. So I think that's, trying to be able to share those types of multi-beneficial perspectives. Um, I wanted to comment on the Kashaya forest land that's, um, the Ag and Open Space has an easement across that, regional parks is developing a, a trail. Um, and there's also Rips Redwoods, which is uh, doing some interesting prescribed burns um, on their property. So those are pretty close in proximity. So we could probably make a tour of that, both of those properties to see some interesting forestry. Okay, good. And they're a long ways away. They're both north of Salt Point. That's okay. right. Kim, I also wonder, um, it, like in terms of getting in touch with the tribe to host us, is that really the best way to go about it? I don't know how to get in touch with the Kashaya tribe and I don't know if it is even totally appropriate for me to ask them to host us on tour. <laughs> Do you have some um, ideas? I, I have pretty good contacts there. They have a, a vegetation treatment um, program up there. So I could reach out to the folks that I know and uh, see what's the best way to um, solicit a tour of their property. I think they'd be interested in it. I think they would. Awesome. OK, great. Uh, and they're super nice people. Uh, SRG land, JC land under focused education. I don't have anything on that. Do you, Jill? It takes Jill a little minute to un unmute. Yeah, here's Jill. Oh, you're on mute, Jill. Okay. Well, actually, okay. I, emailed, I emailed her a little bit a couple weeks ago about an update on the JC's program, and she said that she thought it was maybe going to be starting spring quarter or spring semester. This is Brianna. Um, oh, no, I well, I'll talk to Jill. Oh, Jill, you're unmuted. Yeah, I'm, I'm back. So oh, great. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm out of the loop, but, but Fred maybe is in the loop. I'm out of the loop. Oh, okay. We, so we don't know. <laughs> So we don't know. We should loop back in with Brianna. Yeah, we uh, and we should meet at Shone Farm again. <laughs> we should. If you could reach out to her, Jill, that would be really great. Um, sure, I'm happy to do that. So, okay. um, yeah. So you guys, uh, nothing ever got going. You know, she uh, she's a new teacher and she's very busy. Uh, so I haven't been engaged with them much right now. Well, and and. She has a big vision, and I was amazed that she thought she could do all that. <laughs> so, yeah, it could have been a little harder than she expected. Yeah, with four classes on top of it. <laughs> but yes, I'll, I'll follow up with Brianna, and I'll report back. Okay, cool. Um, there's a mixer on the extension, um, but we've. I want to... Mm, uh, should I skip over that and just do the presentation on, on uh, from Sashi because I'm so excited to hear it? I think that would be fine. Yeah. Oh, well, Mary um, is here. <laughs> actually, yeah, I just wanted to uh, invite Mary Chambers. Uh, she was interested in our progress with this um, oh. agriculture and, and forest working group mixer. So I wondered if we could spend maybe five minutes. Yeah, let's on do that. that. Hi, Mary. I didn't see you. Hi, no, no worries. I'm sorry to interrupt the flow of the meeting. Um, yeah, happy to hear anything or any way I could help, um, but no need to derail things too thoroughly. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> sorry. No, the That's rail calls for you right now. 
<laughs> that's not quite how it is in any way. But um, I, I think this is something that, uh, Fred, I think you were the original author of this idea of just uh, the balance between um, uh, agricultural practices on, um, on productive uh, ag soils uh, and the hillsides and forested landscapes that are above them that sometimes go unmanaged. And so uh, one of the things that we wanted to try to do is, is have a discussion with um, ag uh, specialists in, in viticulture or uh, whatever the landscape might be. And just to have that, uh, see where we can try to um, maybe improve practices or have a discussion about the challenges that they run into when it comes to forested landscapes. Do they have the technical expertise? Are they getting um, support from other entities to, to be able to manage those resources? Is that pretty accurate, Fred? All, all I said was behind every well-managed farm is a forgotten forest. <laughs> I'm not sure we want to necessarily portray that to the ag community. But <laughs> no, but, uh, but we do want to say to that, that the ag community holds a good, 50, good percentage of the forest here in Sonoma County. And we'd like to reach out to them because often they see it merely as the back 40 and not something they're managing say right. Corbell. <laughs> I, I have some I have somebody for that too if you want. So we're supposed to gather planning group at this point. Um yeah that was my my thought was we need to just kind of have um the like forest working group members who are interested in talking about this like during this meeting and outside of the meeting to um figure out our scope which is the second part and then start holding interviews with our ag contacts and then actually scheduling the event. So, um, so yeah, just taking, I would love to get a pulse from the group right now on who's interested in organizing this. You can raise your hand or just um, turn off your, turn on your mic and say me. <laughs> I know Mary is awesome. <laughs> I, I'm interested. I, I personally though, don't have the expertise in the actual forest part. Um, so not, able to do it by myself. <laughs> oh yeah, no, this is, you're super helpful to us. Sorry, Adriana, what would, um, I got, I lost track of all the threads. So um, this one was about, uh, this one was about uh, ag or, or about? Yeah, it's about ag. I think it's really, so it was kind of inspired by uh, like the realization that we, um, have a certain audience here that we talk internally about about like really good practices for forest management but there's a lot of people who aren't a part of these conversations and um and that we can create opportunities to interface with with other folks who who we like you know who are managing forests and maybe don't have access to the same information that we do so um and do you want people who are managing forests or managing agricultural and you know vines like sort of next to forests like, is that good too? Because I have somebody for that. That's oh, yeah. exactly it, Sashi, which is- Okay, yeah, um, I can, I, I got, I have the perfect person actually. Um, and uh, who would probably even give a tour if you guys would want. Um, do, 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 Adriana, do you want me to just follow up with you on all these things? That would be great. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and so I guess the, the idea of the mixer and it's still, you know, we're still kind of envisioning what this even is, but it's, you know, it's kind of, an opportunity to meet somewhere, maybe, you know, at a location that fits our audience. Like if we're talking to, to vineyards, maybe we can meet at a winery. Um, or if we decide we really want to focus on rangeland, we could meet you know, somewhere else. But um, it's, uh, yeah, I think right now we're just, we just kind of need some folks in the working group who would be interested in helping organize this. Definitely Fred and Kim, um, you know, steering committee members have, and, and Jason too, um, have been, helping me with the initial part. Now I just want to know if there's anyone else that I should put into the fold. Um, Mary, we, great to have you. We might want to invite um, a couple of the supervisors uh, okay. who have districts that do both. Because, um, uh, you know, ideally we get the Farm Bureau. Ideally we get um, the, the vineyard, uh, the Grape Growers Association and stuff like that because they are forest growers associations as well. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um i don't know if i'm the right person for all that outreach but uh many of us are nice yeah i'm, I'm happy to help with any part of that too 
Uh, okay. Well, I guess go hold interviews with ag contacts. So we're talking about that and schedule event for the summer. Uh, not on top of, not on top of harvest. That's a good point. Aim, aim for the Gallo White Barn on West Side Road. It's so nice. <laughs> okay. Was there anyone else who wanted to be part of the planning group? I'm just making a list of names real quick. Okay, well, just reach out to me if you want to, and we'll send you some, we'll provide some updates next, uh, next meeting on how far we get. And before we go into the presentation, I'd like to just get quick intros from uh, Mary and Anais. Uh, sure, I'm happy to introduce myself, and I just wanted to ask before I do that, um, should we then, Adriana, expect an email from you to me, Sashi, Kim, and Fred, or um, is that kind of the next step here where we can start discussing this in our in our own group? Yeah, I think that sounds great. And I can make a time for us to meet again so we can really dive into this. Um, yeah, I think that would be good. And then um, from there, we, yeah, can start having interviews and and taking it to the next level. Thanks, Mary. Great. Thank you for making me do that next follow-up part. Because <laughs> you <laughs> are so good to always show up and be like, are we talking about it yet? <laughs> I, so, have a, I have a one-track mind. <laughs> um, no, it's perfect. Thank you. And if I should give a brief introduction, I'm, I'm Mary. I'm the um, Agricultural Specialist at Sonoma County Ag and Open Space. Um, so working with Kim in a bit more of a forest adjacent role rather than a forest specific role. It's great to see everyone. Thank you. And uh, Anais. Anais, are you still here? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, I'm Anais Morris. I'm the assistant project director for Taking Action for Living Systems. Um, and I'm happy that I was able to rejoin the call. Um, We've been working with the forest working group for a while. And um, I think Jennifer earlier gave an introduction on some of the things we're working on. So I don't want to take up too much time. Um, yeah. Okay, all right. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and <laughs> Mason innumerable. Innumerable, innumerable. Is there uh, such a... Close. Hi, <laughs> Hi uh, it's innumerable. Um, yeah, so introduction. Uh, I'm with the uh, I'm with Fire Safe Sonoma. I also work with Adriana at the RCD. I'm a Grizzly Corps fellow, uh, so splitting my time with both. And um, yeah, just excited to be here and uh, check out the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thanks for joining us. Our, it's interesting. Our participants are growing as the call goes on. <laughs> so, Sashi, you are up. Okay, Let's see. And um, uh, Adriana might want to share the screen with her. Yeah, let me take down, take down the share so you can put up whatever you, if you'd like to share anything at all. I'm trying to get. Okay. All right, so can you see the, yep. can you see the slides? Okay. Okay. Uh, well, thank you so much for having me. Um, I think there's a there's so much we could talk about. So I'm I'm gonna try to I'll try to <laughs> kind of run through this. And um, I think there's a bunch of bunch of other stuff that popped up that um, we should say, Sashi, that we're super early. You know, it's only ten after. Oh, good. So you That's can take true. More than twenty minutes. If okay. <laughs> okay. Well, good. Um, uh, well, good. Okay. So let me get my little notes up here. Okay. Um, so uh, I. Um, uh, just um, started at UC Cooperative Extension in October, um, so it's been about six months, um, and uh, um, so I'm I'm the the new uh, wildfire vegetation Man uh, vegetation management division. Um, so uh, my title is wildfire vegetation mitigation program manager uh, for UC Cooperative Extension um, for, for County of Sonoma, um, and uh, I live in Marin County. I'm a council member on the city of Mill Valley and represent Mill Valley on uh, the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority and, and helped um, put that together. Um, 
and I'm on their executive committee. Uh, and then I'm also doing uh, my master's um, at the Center for Homeland Defense and Security at the Naval Postgraduate School. And I'm focusing on um, wildfire prevention and what is the culture change that's required to kind of get us towards long-term resilience. Um, so uh, a lot of different a lot of different hats on, um, but I like to think that I'm, I am at the intersection between um, research policy and practice. And uh, I think it, it, what's been really interesting for me in this is sort of um, you know, taking what I've learned in Marin and, and seeing the way things are different and the nuances of Sonoma County. Um, so that's something I'm really hoping to kind of get from this group as well. Um, so the, uh, um, you all know Stephanie Larson, our, our uh, County Director and Grazing Advisor. Um, you know, so she had sort of the vision of, well, we need to really, um, UC Cooperative Extension is all about applied research um, and science, and uh, we really need to kind of focus that in on, on vegetation management. Um, she is uh, this week involved in hiring a uh, fire advisor that would be um, uh, somebody with more of a, um, uh, a structures kind of background um, to be uh, housed in Sonoma and working in the neighboring counties. Um, but uh, you know, you're, you're probably all familiar with Match.Graze, um, which is a, a program that uh, matches together grazing herds and people who need grazing. Um, and then uh, the, and you're also familiar with the, the wildfire fuel mapper that yeah, UC Cooperative Extension developed in, in partnership with Pepperwood. Um, and uh, there are a couple of uh, um, new things we're doing, um, partnering with other county departments. And I'll move into that here. Um, so uh, UC Cooperative Extension really works um, with private and public landowners and land managers to help them plan their vegetation management using applied research and, and tools um, and helping landowners to realize their, their resource goals and really to help them understand long-term resiliency and the attributes of the landscape um, and how those things fit together. And this you know, uh, fits very nicely into the handbook project um, that uh, Ellie and Caitlin and I are gonna be working on later this year. Um, and implementing these best practices over multiple years, really thinking about maintenance. I think that came up earlier um, that uh, um, there are lots of kind of one-off type projects being done or funded. Um, and uh, you really have to think about when you do a treatment or when you can, you know, begin a prescription on, on, a, on a land, you're really committing yourself to a maintenance lane. Um, uh, otherwise you are going to be encouraging, um, you know, growth of invasives um, and, uh, you know, vegetation management is not a, something that you just do once. It's, you know, it's like, it's like gardening. You, you have to keep, keep going um, and uh, connecting to grant funding and, and cost share programs. Um, so the uh, fuel mapper you already kind of know about, um, uh, the sort of first go round is um, a, uh, a static set of GIS map layers that really give um, landowners at the parcel level, parcel level um, the ability to see, um, you know, fire hazard, uh, uh, fire history, um, uh, get a sense of what the uh, risk is, and it was using um, LIDAR that was done, I believe, in 2013. And uh, the North Coast Resource Partnership has put together a great amount of funding to do uh, a, a, lot, a run of LIDAR for the entire North Coast counties, um, which is really, really exciting and will give us a little bit more data because um, uh, you know, post-fire, there's obviously some more, there's some changes there. Um, so when I, uh, part, part of what I was brought in to do was to think about, okay, so what do we want to do next here? Um, and then it turned out that Sonoma Water um, was already working on um, this decision support framework, which you'll hear more from Susan about. So Susan um, and I and um, uh, Deanne DiPietro are sort of partnering on um, how do we uh, create this sort of ecosystem to look at to look at this information from a large landscapes level and at the parcel level. And they've already done a ton of work in kind of bringing in um, uh, all these really great data sets. Um, uh, uh, some of you are part of the technical advisory group, um, including Pepperwood, who is on this call, um, to help put some of that data together uh, so that you can kind of go back and forth between that large landscape view, view and the parcel level view. And they're kind of different people who sort of need to use different tools. but one of the other goals is that um, you know this is all um, you know all, this is all public funds that we're using to do all this stuff. Um, so and it's to benefit the public. So we really should all be working together, and it should be something that um, is really benefiting the public. So we are uh, so Sonoma Water, UC Cooperative Extension, um, Ag and Open Space, um, Permit Sonoma. We're all 
trying to work together to integrate all these different tools together. So the CWPP has um, a bunch of different uh, you know, product tracking prioritization um, tools in their hub site. Um, uh, Kim has his uh, grant program. Um, you know, all these tools should really work together uh, for for the public's benefit. So that's something we're putting a lot of time and energy into is trying to get that all coordinated. Um, so then I just wanted to kind of uh, throw out, this is sort of just a, a there's there's not much more to report than this. Um, uh, and when we have a fire safe Sonoma person on here, um, but uh, last month, um, the uh, Fire Safe Sonoma Board approved putting together a Wildfire Risk Reduction Solutions Committee, um, and that is to bring together a broad group of stakeholders to explore cross-jurisdictional solutions to reduce wildfire risk throughout Sonoma County, um, and really thinking about um, what, uh, what I'm going to use Kate, Caitlin's very good language here, um, rather than what's the problem to be solved, what's the future condition that we want to reach? Um, and uh, you know, how, how, could, how might we do that together? Um, are there potential governance models? You know, is Marine Wildfire Fire Prevention Authority is one way to do it, but it's, it's not the only way and it may not be you know, the best way for Sonoma County. And then how would you fund that? Um, and uh, so the idea of this committee is going to be to really have that broad stakeholder conversation. Um, and uh, um, the co-chairs of the committee are Roberta McIntyre and uh, Marshall uh, Turberville. And I'm, in, I'm just assisting them from the, uh, Point of view of having done this in Marin. Um, and then um, another sort of uh, highlight of things to come is the uh, handbook for uh, principles and practices for vegetation management in Sonoma County. Um, and that is um, something that was really Caitlin and Ellie's um, uh, brainchild. And the way that I'm thinking about it is really sort of a practical guide to planning vegetation management with for multiple benefits and really bringing together the wildfire prevention mindset and the stewardship mindset. And I think that um, it's, to, to me, those things are very, very congruent and natural to fit together. But from a practical standpoint, I think it's quite overwhelming for people to think about when you think about, well, what am I going to do with my, what am I going to do with my land? How am I going to work with my neighbors? Um, how do I even think about this? Um, and uh, it, it's just, a, it's just a lot it's, it's, it's a lot for people to, to hold in their heads. And so what we're kind of hoping to do, and, and this is where Caitlin and Ellie, I, I hope you'll jump in, um, is to be able to um, bring all that together in, in, a, in a set of principles that make sense um, so that people can have a way of thinking about this and having this uh, tighter relationship to the land uh, and not be overwhelmed by you know, all the different ways to think about it. Um, and then I think the best part about that is it's gonna be combined with workshops um, and demonstrations for the public kind of building on what Ellie and Caitlin have already been doing. Um, I don't know if you guys wanna jump in on this part. Caitlin or Ellie. Uh, I can't see everybody, so I can't tell if Ellie is still, oh yeah, she is on. Um, well, there's a lot to be still worked out here and, uh, Ellie mentioned this earlier, but um, people like everyone who's on this call, the um, people with expertise and experience doing land management, wild land management, vegetation management, um, fuels work are, uh, a lot of this project will be convening and um, trying to extract and summarize uh, the wisdom of, of, of this practitioner group um, and we have committed to being as responsive as we can to the highly variable um, plant communities in Sonoma County. We have a lot of different places with a lot of different land uses and um, plant communities, and um, that affects what, uh, what is smart to do on the land. And we're, uh, as Sashi said, trying to sort of meet a lot of different, um, a lot of different objectives, a lot of different value sets, everything from um, increased safety to biodiversity, to water security, um, to aesthetics, to reducing cost over time. Um, and also issues like the, the workforce um, and working conditions for people who do the work, et cetera. So it's a, it's a, big, it's a big project that you'll all be hearing more about. Ellie, do you have anything? <laughs> Hi. Oh my God, you heard my garage door go up. I'm sorry, I thought I was on mute. But um, anyway, no, I, I'm going to, what you guys did a great job just summarizing it. And I am headed out in my car. So I don't have anything to add. You're awesome. I'm really excited 
the, uh, for the team. I mean, the, the funds haven't been awarded yet, so we can't, you know, count our chickens before they're hatched. But assuming that we're successful, I think it's going to be a great project, and I look forward to working with everyone on it. Kim? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention one of the things that was really appealing about this particular project is the fact that it is going to be Sonoma County centric. So as Caitlin mentioned, uh, that we have a variety of different landscapes and uh, habitat types, and we really want to make it specific to Sonoma County and not something that's just going to lie on the shelf, but something that's very practical that's going to really support any kind of landowner and for them to understand the spectrum of treatments that are going to accomplish various goals. I think that was one thing that's really um, going to be huge value. Uh, the workshops, I think, is going to be really helpful as well to see people getting together and talking about what are the different objectives and what does the science say. So I think that's really going to be a, a super valuable process. I really appreciate you guys taking the lead on this. Thank you, Kim. I think you were really helpful in kind of helping to shape this project um, as well and make sure that it's something that's valuable to the county. Um, and um, so I'm going to actually stop there because I have a couple other things to um, talk about um, based on kind of what we talked about today. Um, let me just pull up my notes again. Um, so, um, yeah, so uh, for my master's thesis, I'm, I'm looking at um, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we kind of got ourselves into the, the condition that we're in, um, which is largely an overvegetated condition um, beyond the carrying capacity of the landscape in the state of California. Um, and we're going to, it's going to require a change in culture in order to get us um, to a healthier and more uh, a state of long-term resilience. And the way I'm thinking about long-term resilience is um, resilient to expected threats, um, which would include natural fire cycles, um, you know, floods, nat natural uh, threats to the environment. We have, um, you know, we, we've, we've built homes in the wildland urban interface in California. There are 11.2 million homes in the wildland urban interface. Um, so that's just, a, that's just a fact of where we are and um, protecting uh, life safety is sort of number one. Um, but we do have to protect natural resources um, like our forests and our watersheds. Um, and uh, what is, going to get us there is is a change in the culture and not just from the public but you know, from you know fire professionals um you know forestry professionals all of that um and then i just wanted to um mention uh pg e so um on uh yeah what day is it so it was tuesday um uh i was invited and brought this group to go tour the pg e um uh wildfire risk command center and their hazard Hazard Awareness and Warning Center, um, and then we observe that their their uh, their executive team has a weekly operating review where they kind of you know check in on all the different um, parts of the operation and, and the um, and sort of the all hazards risk, not just fire. Um, and uh, so I just I just saw you know all the things that they're doing um, and could at any point kind of talk about that or or bring people in for you to hear about that if you want um, about the what they're doing specifically around. Um, the risk to uh, power lines. They've done a lot um, to, uh, you, you all kind of remember the sort of early days of the, the, the public safety power shutoffs. Um, you know, we definitely had a lot of that in, um, in, uh, in Mill Valley. We had, you know, power, the first one, the power was down for four days. So um, they've done a lot to um, what they call sectionalize the, uh, the lines so that they can de-energize smaller sections of the line. Um, uh, and they've also done what they're calling um, enhanced enhanced power line safety um, systems, enhanced power line EP, EPSS, um, which uh, they showed us a really interesting demo of um, you know a branch falling on a a, a non EPSS um, line and how that burns versus one that it, um, has this, these enhanced safety protocols on them, um, and it can. They can sense the you know sense the disruption and de-energize the line very quickly. Um, so they've done they have a lot of really cool tech on that front, um, and then they do a lot of really cool predictive um, uh, you know weather uh, you know the fire behavior triangle is, is weather topography and fuel. Those are the things that are that um, dictate the um, behavior of a fire and the intensity of a, of a fire. So um, they uh, are you know they're monitoring they're monitoring weather. Um, they have great you know this great meteorological data, and then they have this great um, 
uh, they're using a, uh, a platform called uh, TechnoSilva that Cal Fire also uses that does um, fire spread modeling. Um, so they do they do some of those kind of simulations to sort of figure out, okay, you know, if this happens here, this is what would happen there. And they one of their frustrations is they don't own the land on either side of the lines, right? So they 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 own their lines and they have to do some vegetation management around that. And they just filed their latest um, wildfire uh, mitigation plan with the CPUC um, that has a uh, you know these like 50 different objectives in it that we went through with them, um, but uh, they can't, they can control that ignition piece of it um, to uh, what you would, I think, all find is a surprising degree, um, but they can't control what's around that if it's private. Um, and uh, there are only certain things that they can do uh, on uh, private land that their lines go across. So um, that, um, again, if that's a topic of interest, um, they, you know, they, they, they love talking about that stuff. And I actually, um, uh, the feedback that, that um, I and the group that I brought in, I brought, the group that I brought in was, um, uh, you know, a, a, you know a, a wine business, um, military, uh, fire service, and academic group. And um, we all kind of gave them different feedback on what we thought would be great for the public to kind of know more about what they're doing. Um, and uh, I think they're, they're definitely interested in kind of having more people understand what they're doing to kind of to to make the, the community safer and to be able to deliver deliver power. Um, let's see. Ash, I can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah so um, the several of the different chitted fuel bricks that we're trying to sponsor throughout the county um, really do have some uh, nexus with uh, power lines. And so uh, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, Gurnwood, there's a community where they're trying to do a shitted fuel break that would connect to um, a pg e corridor that can also serve as a fuel break. Do you think pg e would be uh, receptive to collaborating on those types of projects? Is, are you seeing any of that uh, effort uh, in other parts of the, of the county or in Marin, for instance? Yeah, I think um, I think Sonoma has more of that type of land than Marin does. Um, but, you know, Sonoma is Marin is, is more likely to have, um, you know, kind of public land um, uh, but yeah, I, I, they, they are, they are interested in that. Um, I'm not sure, you know, I don't want to speak for them. So I don't know that, that, that what their um, kind of strictures are and what they, they can do, but I know they're very interested in that um, as a general principle. Um, and I can, um, uh, let's talk about that one specifically offline and I can, I can figure out who would be the best person because there's um, their, there's their government relations guy and then there's their, um, their risk guy. Um, who I'm going to have out into Mill Valley anyway. Um, so we can definitely talk about that. That sounds good. Thanks. I, I would personally really appreciate a day with pg &E in terms of this, uh, this organization. Um, you know, I don't want to say that one lives through the worst case scenario, but they were cutting down old growth trees in good condition with which, with, within 250 feet of the power line and badly and without whatever. Um, so I had to create a, a barrier around the power line to say trees will never be older than 40, feet, 40 years here because it has to be a power line and therefore it has to be a regulated clear cut, even age management going into the future. And um, PG&E's got violations here in Sonoma County from forestry, and they've been falling trees in streams, and they seem to have a whole pile of, of contractors who are not necessarily in coordination. So um, without turning it into a gripe session, it would be really great <laughs> to have a PG&E session for everybody's edification. Mm -hmm. Um, if there are specific things like that, I think um, it's much more useful if they know those things in advance and then you can have them come kind of armed with answers. So I, I would love if any of you have specific things like that, like that, that's a, that, that what you just said, Fred, was really great. It was really specific. Um, and what you had, Kim, was also really specific, not just sort of generally like, you know, they're evil and wrong and whatever it is like, you know, they, they can address that kind of stuff, too. But like, give me specific things to send to them. Um, and then, then we can have the right people in there and not just a spokesperson, right? Because I think that's what you want. Um, 
Right. And what we really need is a discussion about how do you treat burned areas? How do you treat not burned areas? How do you make a decision? How do you coordinate your your contractors? And how can you work with our program at keeping fire low while doing the best ecological choices that you can and Mm -hmm. turning it over to the lowest guy on the totem pole who wants to cut the biggest tree? may not be the right answer and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we've already talked yeah. about like the who is certified to do various pieces of work who is you know that they have to be certified for the decision as well as the physical act mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah um i, I um yeah, so maybe i can just follow up with um fred and kim offline but if there's anybody else who has kind of That'd specific um specific things um, that, you know, specific stories or, or, uh, concerns, you know, I'm happy to be the intermediary to bring those to them. And, um, you know, this is not a job you really want to volunteer for. Well, you know, (laughs) my, you know, my, my, uh, my, my whole, uh, just sort of, um, my whole mode in general is, is is about connection. So I, you know, I connecting, uh, them, you with them. I mean, that's just, of, of course, if, you know, wh- why not? Um, I think that, you know, everybody, everybody wants to do, everybody wants to do the right thing. Um, you know, let's, let's figure out how we can enable that as best we can. Um, and, you know, who knows what, you know, they, 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 I, I can't control what they're going to do, but uh, I can certainly make the connection and, and try to do that in a more specific way. And when this is where, um, you know, it, it helps to have these multiple hats on um, because, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm an elected official in Marin County too. So that seems to help a little bit. <laughs> you know, to, to add another layer, yeah. Kim, you're probably going to expand off what I'm just going to say really quick, but I loved your concept of tying in the PG&E breaks with other fuel breaks and just right. wanted to throw out the idea of looking at these maintenance maintenance regimes required right. to clear that vegetation tying that into our maintenance programs yeah that's exactly where i was going to go is like um i think one of the interests that the working group has expressed uh, since the 2017 was just to have a dialogue with pg e foresters uh, people who are and, and how they have control of the crews that are actually doing the work i think that's some of the thing that's pretty consistent with um, this group, and we've seen a variety of different practices, not always good um, on uh, everything from riparian areas to uh, landscapes that are considered um, uh, wildlife preserves that uh, egg and open space to try to protect. So all that variability is something that's, it's a whack-a-mole situation where you have so many layers of a large company that's working statewide um, it, it's great to have a local representative at least, at least have a, a yep. dialogue. Yeah. Um, uh, so, I mean, I, I've worked the most with their, with their Marin government relations guy, but I did meet their Sonoma guy um, when I was there um, the other day. Um, and uh, so he'd be, um, he'd be sort of the, the keeper of that, but then uh, it was really interesting. It was, it was neat to see how accessible the, you know, their executives were, um, you know, and, and how interested they are in this. Um, their general counsel lives in Mill Valley, um, which is how I kind of got tied into all this. And, and he, um, uh, he, was, he was just saying like, you know, I want them to add a couple more weather stations in Mill Valley. I know exactly where they should go. Like, you know, he's really, he's kind of a little bit of a fire nerd and kind of follows that kind of stuff too. So um, yeah, let's, let's bring this to them and, and see if they can uh, have this dialogue. Um, so yeah, let's just do you know anything else anybody wants to talk about because there's I feel like there's there's a lot there's 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 so much that um, um, I wanted to kind of jump in on with all the stuff you all were sharing. Um, uh, one of the other things that um, came up that I just wanted to mention was um, uh, the Marin Fire Foundry. Um, so one of the things that the Marine Wildfire Prevention Authority is funding is this Fire Foundry program. Um, uh, and the idea is to you know increase diversity in the in the fire service um in in a meaningful way so we're we're have we have our first cohort right now um you know the idea being that you get somebody you know 18 you know that you have to be 18 but you know roughly um you know graduating from high school um 
and uh, we're training them to be uh, fire fuels crews. Um, and they are, this is a partnership with um, uh, MWPA's funding, it's Marin County Fire um, and uh, um, the, uh, uh, I believe it's College of Marin, it might be Santa Rosa JC as well, I, I'm not 100% sure. Um, and um, the Conservation Corps of the North Bay is actually the employer. Um, and then the county is providing uh, wraparound social services as needed. Um, I put the link in the chat to, to the Fire Foundry program. Um, if that's something we want to, um, you guys want to hear about, um, I can have somebody come and speak to you about Fire Foundry as well. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Any, I any, 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 yeah, of, of kind of the following Jason's uh, discussion and Caitlin as well has. Uh, expressed a lot of interest in, in how do we develop this kind of, it's it's a professional development plan. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. you have lots of different layers of this uh, vegetation treatments and you have um, unskilled labor that we just need uh, bodies working in the forest. That's one layer. Uh, there's those uh, skilled labor who are capable of uh, running machines as well as identifying um, native uh, plants and uh, rare plants in different uh, habitat types. And so, uh, and then there's the, the supervisors who are ultimately responsible for how the crew is implementing whatever prescription they've been given. So mm -hmm. I really think that that communication to be able to lay that all out from the, what the JC is doing, what Sonoma State's doing, um, how CCMB works, Circuit Rider, we have some good options but there's also, uh, I'm seeing a little bit of a gap between uh, folks that are working for CCMB and those that are a higher level professionals, um, you know, in, in the, the pen, penultimate uh, layer of Fred Ufrat out in the ground being able to supervise it all. Penultimate. <laughs> so I, pen. That's right. <laughs> Not well, always the uh, ultimate, but the pen, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the, the anti-penultimate. <laughs> But I do think that that would be a great discussion to, to really uh, bounce around ideas and get um, have a little panel. We've done brown bags in the past, and I think this you know we're very fortunate to be able to zoom and um, get a lot of people in the room at the same time. But uh, I think that would be a great uh, panel to have folks uh, discuss some of the uh, opportunities, um, efforts that are going on, as well as some of the challenges we're running across. A couple of things. Uh, this would be a good thing to have along with Good Fire Alliance um, because they're both kind of going the same direction. And I've actually started working with a crew and just being the guy who shows up with donuts, number of, a couple of crews. And, uh, and we do a little bit of OG training, um, you know, with like, okay, here's what we're actually trying to do. And this is what's really going on. And, and, uh, and we're even talking about sitting down and doing management plan training after that, because the crew's from Casadero and they all own 40 acres and, and perhaps a mule, uh, <laughs> a Kawasaki mule. <laughs> and um, OG, by the way, means old guy. I think it means original gangster, I believe. Not any longer. <laughs> <laughs> old growth perhaps <laughs> you can mean both those things uh, uh, can I, can I just uh, i just wanted to throw something in here um by the way i'm i'm really interested in this and i've done a little bit of outreach to different ages there's another group up in lake county called tara um that's doing training with indigenous uh youth I think that's just a great conversation and panel that, that you're bringing up, Kim. Um, I also want to mention that um, Jean Chin may want to be involved in the conversation about PG&E, because I know she's been involved with the Sierra Club and, and the issues that they have with PG&E. So um, back to the previous conversation, I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Those are, that's, Sashi, that was an amazing amazing <laughs> presentation and thank you for your cross uh cross discipline cross cultural cross everything uh doing a master's thesis and sitting on the mill valley city council <laughs> yeah it's a yeah it's a lot of stuff it kind of all came together at once <laughs> well i'm glad that you have dedicated your, yourself personally to this because 
clearly it's not a part-time job. No, um, I mean, it's kind of, it's, yeah, it's all I, it's all I, I think about when I'm not, not when I'm not thinking about my kids, it's all I think about. <laughs> well, yeah. and ultimately this is about it's getting awesome the youth. Raising two kids. <laughs> yeah. 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 How, how do you find time to sit on the Supreme Court? Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, it sounds like finding the training money and getting it directed to the people who are actually running the, the youth programs is turning into something that we are interested in here as we're holding hands with Good Fire Alliance and the other training programs like Fire Foundry uh, that are around. Um, we, I don't know, do we have any other downloads that we would like to engage in? I think we're, we're kind of through the agenda today and are ready to talk, start talking about the upcoming meetings, which would be a month from now, Thursday, and also April 23rd. Right? I'll let you take That's it, Adriana. Right. Yeah. Take it. <laughs> All right. So yeah, our next meeting is uh, same time in April, third Thursday of the month. Please come. And then um, we have the tour of the Pacific Union College in England with Peter LaCourt. Um, Saturday, April 23rd. Um, thanks for the suggestion that we also, in, you know, invite some Cal Fire folks and maybe even some, um, some from the Los Padres, or no, the uh, Los Posadas National Forest to be there as well. Um, and yeah, I guess up above, you know, in the outreach section, I, we have a long list of topics that we want to keep on the docket speakers we want to hear from at our quote unquote brown bags i'll call them zoom meetings now zoom presentations now since we've been on zoom for gosh like two years now um and uh and a couple you know field tours coming up too so the there's the puc one in april then i'd like to do um the coast uh salt point uh, forest health tour with fred and state parks brennan o'neill in uh, may and then from there, we'll schedule out a few more field tours like um, at Pepperwood. Uh, it will be great to see what they're doing, um, Kashaya, et cetera. So yeah, that's where we're headed. Um, thank you so much again, Sashi, for your presentation. That was fantastic and really good to just know you <clears throat> and have you in our group. Yeah. Um, so please feel free to come back again anytime you like and uh, keep tabs on us. You can also just look at our, our news as you know, we have a listserv where we send around resources and um, meeting notes and things like that. So that happens to be easier for you. Um, great. Is there anything else that anyone wanted to bring up? We have a few minutes left. Oh, I'm sure everybody wants this to Zoom meeting to go on because nobody, <laughs> nobody likes to say goodbye to a Zoom meeting. <laughs> I'm curious to hear more about the um the handbook, the ecological practices handbook. Do we know kind of what stage that's at or and when we might see a draft of it? So first first um you know, we have to go through Kim's process um and get it get it approved. Um oh, right, so right. assuming that that's a go, then um uh we'd kind of scoped it out as an 18 month project um to uh you know, figure out figure out what uh, how to structure it. Get the you know sort of technical pieces of it. Um, you know, start doing the workshops. Ellie. Yeah, I'm still driving here. So, um, but I'll, I'll mention that um, Caitlin and Sashi and I are going to get together really soon because we did get some funding from, as I said earlier, Fire Safe Sonoma to do a pilot in West County. So we with. Um, uh, those folks over there in the JC. And also we've got Devin at Pepperwood very interested to work with us. And, and so my idea is that we would actually get an early, you know, rollout for, because of the pilot and, and we'll, you know, perhaps have a, a outline as maybe as early. I mean, and I don't want to promise anything, but, but this is my ambition to have an outline in maybe June, something like that. And we, so Kaylin and I were talking about this yesterday that it would be great, even if the handbook itself isn't done until December of 2023, um, we can have the workshops going in tandem and we'll be developing information and 
getting it out there to folks and finding out what people want, you know, because we don't want to just do a handbook that's based on what we think everyone else needs to know. We want to get feedback from the, you know, the actual landowners and land managers themselves. So it's going to be an iterative process. And uh, we're just going to, you know, get down and get to work on it really soon and get back to you, you know, with probably monthly updates. How's that? Oh, yeah. Hey, I, uh, I want to just uh, take the time to uh, thank Adriana and, and uh, Fred and the folks who helped organize the um, riparian forest tour. That was a great effort. It took a lot of uh, effort to bring the different agencies who participated last Saturday. And just uh, last time, I guess, um, and just uh, just uh, thanks to the groups that were able to host um, our, our, our working group visit. That was huge. So thanks to Adriana for taking the lead on that and Fred for participating as one of the, the guides. And I really appreciate the work you guys do. Well, you know, doing this forestry work this long, it's such a delight to be able to share it, right? and say, this is our goal, this is what we did, this is where we screwed up, this is where it worked out great. So I think the sharing is is uh, everything. Yeah, thank you. I mean, thank you, Barry, too, for, for joining us today and over the weekend and, and um, sharing your work with us. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to mention one of the best parts, and Fred, you just brought it up, is that, every, that folks are able to say, this is where we screwed up and this is how we can learn from it. And I, they did that at Pepperwood too. And the more we can do that and share with each other, the better off the whole process will be. So thanks very much for you know being vulnerable like that too. An iterative learning process. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you all. Thanks everyone. All right. All see right, you next well, one. See you, thanks, Take care. see you soon. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.